actually met uh, when we were working together in a homeless youth agency. And I think that that place is not alone um, in the Bay Area in that most of the, the homeless agencies in <laughs> the Bay Area are highly ineffective, you know? I mean, the amount of money that they spend every year on homelessness in this area is astronomical. I've lost track of how many millions it is. Um, and by now we could have built housing for each and every homeless person, <laughs> right? Uh, really nice housing, not substandard housing, really nice housing. And it's just, yeah, the system really needs some serious healing. Yeah. Looking upstream, you know, there's so many different ways to even look at the, the issue of homelessness, houselessness, the, the, especially in the last year and a half, right, in the Bay, and just seeing how, how communities shift and change. There's so much wisdom there, low-hanging fruit even. But mm -hmm. for whatever reason, people love moving, walking around that. And I love, it's so, it's so funny when you take a step back too, because when I look at the work that is often done and how the importance, right. And like, we are doing good work and, you know, people have their fancy clothes on and they're in the meeting and they're talking all around. It's like, we could do this all day, right? Like we can put Zoom meetings on the schedule all day, but until we really, one, are listening Two are taking a step back outside of ourselves and our framing um, and understanding of the world and really looking at the systems, the ways it's impacting people and the way people are naming that they're being impacted. Um, yeah, we're just wasting time and resources. And we unfortunately see way too much of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and also um, on my channel, I have a playlist called solutions to homelessness where mm -hmm. different providers and even some homeless people are talking about the uh, programs that they're running or they have run that actually worked for people. Mm -hmm. And I just think that the money isn't going to the right people, right? <laughs> like, the people who actually know what to do about, yeah. you know, people being unhoused aren't getting the money. Yeah. And the, the thing that is most interesting to me is that sometimes um, in the U.S. in particular, we act like we are just trying to solve a problem for the first time or, you know... <laughs> There yeah. are places in the world who actually have been making strides towards some of the things that we're still banging our heads against the wall trying to figure out. And we can actually look at models of the things that are working in other places. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's another radical idea. What are you talking about that there are other places in the world? <laughs> yeah, seriously. And are there other places in the world that actually know things? Wait, are there other places in the world? Yeah, that's what I started with, right? Because, okay, so I, I grew up uh, uh, with a lot of travel privilege. Mm -hmm. I got to start traveling internationally when I was a little girl. And I was shocked at the lack of global perspective in my neighborhood. But of course they were... were uh, lacking in that because they never left the country mm -hmm. and did you know most americans don't leave the country yeah absolutely and you know that's where some of the work in the travel realm began for me i actually didn't leave the country for the first time until i was in my 30s what Aside from, I think when I was younger, we had gone to Tijuana maybe during oh, a San okay. Diego trip when the borders were still open. Um, but outside of that, I was in my 30s. I went to Cuba. That was my first trip um, just actually in 2017. Nice. And 
the reason why that was so transformative, that kind of broadened out this entire part of my work, my channel and the things mm. that I'm working on is because I had a really interesting experience. One, being in this brown country, right? And it was right after we were able to travel to Cuba again. Um, just that being immersed in this culture, this rich history. And then when I traveled back into the United States, TSA is the first, you know, interaction that you have, right? And people hold their power and privilege very differently in the United mm. States. And so there was this moment of like being surrounded by all this fun and beauty. And I got to meet one of my friend's family in Cuba and, you know, just celebration and returning back. I had this moment where I got into a very challenging kind of interaction with a TSA agent about something I was bringing back from duty free. Mm. And it hit me like a ton of bricks in that moment. Like the, experience of being a black person in the world and the way that kind of the way we carry that the way we experience that the way we engage with the world based around that and it impacted me so deeply in that moment that I started crying like it was mm -hmm. a very visceral experience of what I was returning back to in the United States and you know it took me a while to really sit with what was happening. And it wasn't until I left the United States again and really just started unpacking what my experience is as a black person globally versus being in the United States. And that's not to say that anti-black racism doesn't exist in other places, um, but also blackness exists in many places, you know? Mm -hmm. and. Thought I was native to their communities everywhere I went. When I was in Portugal, people thought that I was Afro Portuguese when I was in, you know. And so there was something to that that fueled my, my work, my revolutionary work in mm -hmm. the States and fueled my understanding of like how beneficial having a global perspective could be for for black folks. And, and it fueled this passion where I was like, not only do I want to travel more, not only do I love learning about histories that I never learned about. Like I'm, I live in Mexico now and I never learned about Afro-Mexican history when I was growing up, right? Like we just right. didn't have an understanding of that. But now to be in this land and learning about the native folks in this community and learning about the history here and learning about the Black history here has really just opened up a different perspective of what it means to be Black in the United States and what it means to be, you know, even that process of healing. And so I feel like that those are the parts that came together for me, even mm -hmm. access, right? Like who has access to to travel? Who is denied travel? And Right. You know? Yeah, I feel like in America, the more poor people are, um, the less they travel mm -hmm. and the <laughs> smaller their travel vicinity is. So mm -hmm. uh, in a lot of poor communities I've worked in here, let's say people, the very poorest people I've worked with, they never left a four block radius, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, and then those with a little bit more, you know, maybe the working poor, they were, you know, able to go throughout a section of a city, you yeah. know, um, it just, it, it's really unfortunate because I think that, I think of it as like, this country is like a big fishbowl, you know, <laughs> and if you don't get out of the fishbowl, it's really hard to know where you are that you almost have to get out of the fishbowl to realize, you know, where, where you were and who you are. It's, it, you're just, yeah. um, it's hard. It's hard to <clears throat> get out of that kind of brainwash soup. You know what I mean? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And it feel, I feel, you know, when, like when I started 
so I don't come from a family that is like well traveled, right? Especially internationally. And so that's mm-hmm. something that's been very new as a my family experience. But even thinking about um, you know, some of the work that's growing with travel well with Mikel, um, and thinking about when I started traveling, I wasn't making very much money and the ways in which I had to structure my life to try to make that happen and prioritize, um, but really not knowing where to start. And, you know, I remember being really overwhelmed and trying to think about or ask questions of, um, of people that I trusted or people that I could see who were traveling. And actually my coworker at the time, um, he was traveling all the time and just like going, you know, he'd come back and he'd tell me stories and show me pictures. And I think he was someone I really started asking more questions to that really gave me the confidence to start traveling and planning trips. And when I started creating more travel content, I feel like I was creating more content for people like me who had already started traveling. And I had a video that did a pretty good bump recently. And it was about travel requirements getting into Mexico during COVID. Oh, that's great. (laughs) <laughs> and it was like the most simple video and it was something I just really threw together right before I was leaving. I think I was leaving Puerto Escondido and the questions that people were asking and the ways the questions were structured and the emotions that were rising, the excitement, the fear, the unsurety, that really reframed for me like, okay, folks have really basic questions. Folks have fears. Folks have concerns. Folks are overwhelmed, you know, like there's so many experiences that people are having or they're, or they're just curious. They don't really know where they where they want to go or if they want to go. And so that's been the focus moving forward is really integrating more opportunities for people to ask those questions mm-hmm. and be able to see themselves leaving the United States, whether they, they want to become a digital nomad or travel abroad or move abroad or just, you know, vacation outside of the United States. So it's been Mm -hmm. fun. It's been so fun to be on that journey. That's so cool. And shout out to Think Media because that's a foundational concept of Think Media is answering specific questions. (laughs) I definitely, yeah. yeah. That's amazing. It works, right? I mean, just just go ahead and keep doing what you're doing. We overcomplicate things a lot in our society, you know? We're coming back to this idea of, like, simplifying things. 